I have today stumbled upon the greatest food scandal there ever was. I'm surprised there's been no Netflix series about this yet. It all started with a powder. A white powder that they claimed was very bad for you, very harmful and very addictive. I'm not talking about that white powder. I'm talking about this white powder. Chinese salt, guys. I'm talking about Chinese salt. Also known as Ajinomoto or in the food industry as monosodium glutamate. Sometimes it's labeled on food packaging as a flavor enhancer or simply as E621. This is an ingredient commonly found in most Chinese, Japanese or Southeast Asian cuisines. Or so they say. It's also found in these food items. So starting from your instant noodle packages to the pepperoni you find on your pizza, your instant stock cubes to ketchup to mayonnaise to mustard to barbecue sauce to sausages or any other kind of processed meat. You can find it in chips, sometimes even in biscuits. Basically anytime you're eating anything from outside, you can be sure it will have MSG in it. It makes your food taste very, very savory and very yummy and you just don't want to stop eating it. If it's so yummy, then why is it so controversial? Back in the 1960s, a Chinese doctor in the US, Dr. Robert Homan Kwok, wrote a letter to the New England Journal of Medicine claiming that he felt sick after eating at a Chinese restaurant. It's important to note that what Dr. Robert submitted to the New England Journal of Medicine was a letter, not a research paper, not a peer-reviewed article, just a letter. It's supposed to be a very authentic and credible source of medical research from all around the world. How did they publish this letter, which was not reviewed by experts in the field? There were a lot of headlines about Chinese restaurant syndrome, A few decades later, an investigation started into the authenticity of that letter, which had a lot of plot twists. In 2018, a doctor Howard came forward and he said that he sent in that letter back in the 60s to the New England Journal of Medicine and that he had done this as a prank because he had made a bet with a friend to get published in a medical journal. So he basically tried to take credit and said there was no Dr. Robert Homan Kwok who had sent in that original letter and that it was me. I did it. I was trying to prank the New England Journal of Medicine. There was in fact a real Dr. Robert Homan Kwok. Although he was dead by the time this investigation started, his children were very much alive and they admitted that their father had indeed written a letter to the New England Journal of Medicine describing his symptoms after eating out at a Chinese restaurant. So this Dr. Howard was in fact a very well-known and well-reputed doctor and what possessed him to come forward and claim that he had pranked the world? His daughter admitted that her father was in fact a prankster and this was him probably just fooling around by trying to take credit for the whole controversy surrounding MSG being unhealthy. This caused a big dilemma in the medical world. Who really wrote that letter? Mathi, Tumti, Mathi, Tumti, Kontha, Kontha, Kontha. Whilst these investigations were happening about that letter, yeah, the US media was going crazy. They started publishing really racist headlines about Chinese food making people crazy or that generally it was unhealthy. They were fully active in declaring Chinese salt as the evil salt of the East. This is especially funny when you think of how at the same time in the US, the research at that time was claiming that there was little to no scientific evidence of Chinese food actually being unhealthy or that the symptoms of nausea, headache, dizziness, palpitations, etc. were caused by MSG. And there was no scientific evidence. In recent years, the New England Journal of Medicine, the guys who actually published that original letter claiming that Chinese food was bad for you, they stated that they cannot comment on the publication since it happened over 50 years ago. And that 
they also cannot confirm if the letter was peer reviewed back in the day. Okay, so this extremely famous medical journal cannot comment or speculate about something that they themselves published, which started this worldwide controversy about a certain ingredient from a certain cuisine, which has caused a lot of racism towards a certain ethnicity. Everybody involved in the original controversy, in creating this controversy, is dead. Mommy, what are you the original doctor who wrote that letter to the New England Journal of Medicine is dead. The second doctor who came forward claiming that he had written the letter as a prank is also dead. And the editor of the New England Journal of Medicine, who back in the day published that letter without verifying it, is also dead. If everyone is dead, and this story has so many plot twists, how is the narrative surrounding MSG or Chinese salt being unhealthy still going so strong? After all these years, the simple answer is people can die, but stories don't. Especially stories that encourage racism. I said what I said. Okay, now that you know the history of how this whole controversy surrounding all Chinese salt is so unhealthy for you, now that you know the history behind it, stay tuned for part two, guys where we're going to talk about whether or not this evil salt of the East, as the West called it, is actually bad for you or not. What does the science say? We'll talk about that in part two.